Welcome to this video. This is about two quantity comparisons. We have a given number of items of two types. We have a total value of everything and we know the individual value of each type. So the question that we're typically solving is how many of each type are there? Let's look at an example so we understand what we're trying to solve. Problem one, I have $155 made up of $5 and $10 bills. I have 21 bills in total. So how many bills are $5 notes? If we were to use algebra, we might do this. Let X be the number of $5 bills and Y be the number of $10 bills. The total number of bills is 21. The total value of the bills is $155. From the first equation, we might write X plus Y is 21. In the second equation, we would write 5x plus 10y is 155, because x is the number of $5 bills, y is the number of $10 bills, 5x plus 10y is equal to 155. Now, from equation 1, we can multiply through by 5 to get the third equation, 5x plus 5y equals 105. Subtracting that from the second equation leaves us with 5y is equal to 50. 155 minus 105. That means y is equal to 10. Substituting that into the first equation, x plus y is 21. If y is 10, x is 11. Testing that, 11 times 5 plus 10 times 10 is $155. Visually, we might do it like this. We've got $5 notes, and we'll assume everything is $5. No $10 notes, so our total value is that. Now, if we exchange 1.5 for 1.10, notice our total value goes up. And as we keep doing that, the total value keeps going up, even though we have the same number of red and blue blocks altogether. That's because the blue blocks are more valuable than the red blocks. $10 notes are worth more than $5 notes. So we have many possibilities until we finally have all $10 notes and no $5 notes, with the maximum total value. We're going to use tables for these. I've headed up this table with the number of $5 notes and their value on the left, and the number of $10 notes and their value on the right, and the total value on the far right. So let's assume everything's a $5 note. 21 of them, zero $10 notes. That's $105 plus $0. Adding those two together, the total is $105. The next line we change by one. So let's assume $25 notes one ten dollar note and we change by one again for the next line and so forth until we go all the way down from 21 five dollar notes to eventually zero and all the way up from zero ten dollar notes to 21 ten dollar notes now 20 times 5 is 100 1 times 10 is 10 100 plus 10 110 19 fives is 95 two tens is 20 95 plus 20 total 115 18 fives is 90, 3 tens is 30, total 120, and so forth. And we can see, as we look at those total values in the far right column, that they're stepping up. 110, 115, 120, 125, all the way up to 210. They're stepping up in increments of $5. So to go from 105 up to 155, that's $50. Divided by $5 increments means 10 steps. So that means we want to have the 10th line down. 21 minus 10 is 11. And 0 plus 10 is 10. So 11 $5 notes, which is $55. 10 $10 notes, $100. 100 plus 55 is indeed $155. Problem 2. Here we have... On the left, peanuts at $8 a kilo, and on the right, cashew nuts at $18 a kilo. What proportions of each do I need to have a one kilogram bag costing $12? Peanuts cost $8 a kilo. That means 1,000 grams is 800 cents, or 10 grams is 8 cents. Cashews cost $18 a kilo. That means 1,000 grams is 1,800 cents, 10 grams is 18 cents. So we're going to break it down into 10 gram increments and just see how this works for us. Once again, we use a table, peanuts and their value, 
against cash use and their value and the total. Assuming everything's peanuts, that's a thousand grams of peanuts, zero grams of cashews. Eight dollars for peanuts, zero dollars for cashews. Adding together, total eight dollars. The next line we reduce by 10 grams, 10 gram increments. 990 grams peanuts, 10 grams cashews. Then 980 grams peanuts, 20 grams cashews, and so forth. Now, 990 grams of peanuts is 1,000 grams minus 10 grams, $7.92. 10 grams of cashews, 18 cents. Adding together, $8.10. 980 grams of peanuts, that's 1,000 grams minus 20 grams, or $7.84. 20 grams of cashews, that's double 10 grams, 36 cents. Total, 8.20. 970 grams of peanuts is 7.76. 30 grams of cashews is 54 cents. Total, 8.30. If we look at these totals, we can see they're stepping up 8.10, 8.20, 8.30 in 10 cent increments. Now, we want to get to $12. So from $8 to 12, that's a difference of $4. Divide by 10 cent increments means 40 steps to get where we want. 40 steps, 10 grams, each step is 400 grams. So 1,000 grams minus 400 grams, that will leave us with 600 grams of peanuts plus 400 grams of cashews. 600 grams of peanuts is $4.80, 400 grams of cashews, is $7.20, total $12. Here's our third and final problem. This one involves area. So I've got two kinds of square tile, 30 centimeter sides and 50 centimeter sides. I have 400 tiles of the two kinds that cover a total area of 61.12 square meters. How many of each kind do I have? So let's think about area. First of all, the statement says I have 400 tiles of two kinds that cover a total area of 61.12 square meters. So what is area when we're dealing with squares? Well, that's side times side. So for the left-hand tile, 30 centimeters times 30 centimeters, 900 square centimeters. Or in meters, since the question is in meters, 0.3 meters times 0.3 meters, 0 0.09 square meters. And for the right-hand tile, 50 centimeters times 50 centimeters, 2,500 square centimeters, or 0.5 meters times 0.5 meters, 0 0.25 square meters. And we'll utilize that now in our table on the next slide. So once again, here's our table with small tiles, the number of them, their area, the number of large tiles, their area, and the total area. Assume everything is a small tile, 400 of them, zero large tiles. 400 times 0 0.09 square meters is 36 square meters. Zero times anything is zero. Adding those two together, 36 square meters. The next step is to tweak it by one. So 399 small tiles and one large tile. 399 small tiles is just 400 minus one of them. So 36 minus 0 0.09, 35.91 square meters. And one large tile, 0.25 square meters. Total, 36.16 square meters. Now we don't need to go any further because we can see the increase is 0.16 square meters whenever we change one small tile for one large tile. And that's the difference between 0.25 square meters and 0.09 square meters. So how many large tiles should we take at the cost of small tiles in order to build up from 36 square meters to 61.12? Well, let's look at the difference. 61.12 minus 36 is 25.12. And each step we take lifts our figure up by 0.16 square meters. So 25.12 square meters divided by 0.16 square meters is equal to 157. So we need 157 steps. Now, the number of small tiles, if it goes down by 157, that means we'll have 243. And if the number of large tiles goes up from zero by 157, we will have 157 of them. 
243 times 0 0.09 square metres is 21.87 square metres, and 157 times 0 0.25 square metres is 39.25 square metres, which gives us a grand total of 61.12 square metres. Steps to solving a two-quantity comparison problem. Construct a table with five columns. So as we could see, in each of those three examples, we constructed a table. The first column was the number of type A objects. The second column was the value of that number of type A objects. The third column was the number of type B objects. The fourth column was the value for that number of type B objects. And the fifth column was the total value. So, second point, start with an extreme value. Assume everything is the type A object or everything is the type B object. Third point, change the allocation of type by one or by the minimum value you can. Usually one column will go down by one and the other up by one and then look at the effect that has on the total value. So it will increase by some constant amount or decrease by some constant amount. And fourth point, look at the increase and decrease in the total value and compute how many steps are needed to reach the desired total value. Thanks very much for watching. I hope this was useful and that it can be applied somewhere. Don't forget to subscribe and like if you did find it useful.